Hi everyone. So in this lesson, I'm going to teach you integration by parts. Now what this allows us to do what integration by parts allows us to do is to integrate a product a bit like this. Look, so we have the integral of x times sine of x. Now, up until now, you have no way to integrate this, because there is no product rule for integration. And look, you certainly can't integrate them separately. If, it, if there was a plus there, maybe you can, but these are together. This is a product of two different functions. There's nothing we can do. But luckily, well, after you finish watching this, you will know how to integrate by parts and you know how to integrate this. And it's also what we're going to use to integrate ln of x. So um, let us begin. Now, there's t the, the formula in section 5.16 is it's actually written in two ways. Now, they're both basically exactly the same thing. I actually learned this, I learned it this way when I was a student, but I've ended up teaching it like this for one reason or another, they're, but they're both pretty much the same thing and they're pretty much as easy as each other. I think this way is slightly easier for me to explain it, so I, I, I will be using this formula, uh, this version of the formula for the duration of the lesson. Okay, so what we have is, we have the integral of, let's start with Question one, the integral of x sine x dx. Now, the formula is the integral of u dv dx dx. So one of these, so here's my product, one of these has to be u and one of them has to be dv dx. Now, often the tricky bit of integration by parts, and integration by parts, yes, it can be, it can be a difficult question, although it's, look, there's a formula, and usually there's just a procedure you can follow. But the tricky bit to it is deciding which to choose for u and which to choose for dv dx. And just because this comes first doesn't mean I should automatically choose x for, for u and sine of x for dv dx. But I will choose x for u and I'll explain, um, I'll explain why in a second. So we're going to let u equal x. Let me just a line here to be clear that this is nothing to do with this question. So u is equal to x and dv dx is equal to sine x. Now in the formula we need, well we need u, we need v and we need du dx and we need dv dx. Now I have u and once I have u I can easily get du dx. That's one. And when I have dv dx, I can easily get v um, by integrating. Because remember, integration is the reverse of differentiation. And the integral of that is negative cos x. Now at this stage, I don't put in plus c here. I'm not going to go into I'm not going to go into details. But if you want to at the end of this lesson, just put a plus c here, you'll see that they cancel out. They basically it'll can the that c here will cancel out with it here, and you don't need it. So I'm going to I'm going to leave it out here. You're per it's perfectly accepted standard practice to do that at this stage. So this the integral of this is equal to. Let me just move these a little bit over here, so I have space. Okay, so I have my u, my u d u d x, and my v and my dv dx. So the, and don't worry, I will explain why I chose, chose this uh, for u and this for dv dx. But I'm first going to fill in the formula. So it's uv, so u times v. So it's minus, minus x cos x. That's my u times v. Minus the integral of v times du dx, v times du dx is just 1 um, dx. Now I should say, I can't remember if I did say it, that this formula comes from the product rule. I'm not going to derive it. You can easily just look it up on Google. Um, and I, I suggest you, you should, you, you should do that. Um, and it's a fairly straightforward derivation from, it comes from the product rule. So now I have the integral of this is equal to this. But now this integral is, well, it's 
straightforward. I don't need to use any fancy uh, integration by parts or anything like that. It's just the integral of this is going to be negative sine x. So this is equal to minus x cos x um, minus, and the integral of this is minus sine x. At this stage, yes, I'm going to put in a plus c. And this becomes, um, well, I might even put this first, sine x, because it's positive, minus minus x positive, and then sine x minus x cos x plus c. And there we go. So let's go back to why did I choose u to be x and dv dx to be sine x? Well, there's no hard and fast rule here which to choose, but there's a few different strategies we have. Generally, you want to make it easier. So very often, if you have x to the power of n, where n is a positive integer, you should make that u, because then when you differentiate it, you'll break it down and make it easier. Also, you want to choose for dv dx something that's easy to integrate. So it's easy to integrate sine or cos. It's easy to integrate e to the x. Um, yes, it's easy to um, it's easy to integrate an x to the n, but again, it uh, you want the situation to you want this du dx to be getting simpler too, because that's the thing you're going to be integrating in the next in the next uh, step. So to make it to simplify what to choose for u and dv dx, choose the whatever is easiest to integrate for dv dx. That's the kind of number one rule. And then the second rule is um, choose x to the n to be your u. The only exception is when you have ln of x, because you're going to see now ln of x is really not nice to integrate. In fact, logs should be the last thing you choose for dv dx. Okay, let's let me show you how to integrate ln of x, the integral of ln of x dx using integration by parts. Okay, now the way we do it is we say that this is equal to because you you might be thinking, well, hang on, why do I even need integration by parts? Because I said integration by parts was for a product. Well, yes, there's a little trick here. What we do is we say this is actually equal to one times ln of x dx. Now, what I said, what I said is, I want to choose, the, what I want to choose is for, for u, so it's the integral of u dv dx dx, this is my rule, is equal to uv minus the integral of v d dx dx. That's straight from the formula booklet. So I, I want to choose what's the easiest thing to integrate. Now certainly x is going to be easier to integrate than ln of x, because that's just going to be the same thing again. So I'm going to say u is equal to ln of x. I'm going to choose ln of x for u, and I'm going to choose 1 for dv dx. Now when I differentiate ln of x, I get 1 over x. And when I integrate dv dx, I get x. Now let's fill in this uh, formula, uv, which is x times ln of x, minus the integral of v du dx. Now you'll notice, look, what's going to happen here, these are actually going to cancel. So v du dx dx, which is equal to x ln of x, x ln of x, minus the integral of 1 dx. And this is equal to x ln of x minus the integral of 1 dx, 1 with respect to x, is just x. And then at the end, I'll put my plus c. Okay, that's two, example of two examples of integration by parts. Two fairly straightforward examples. I'm going to do another lesson on integration by parts where we have a repeated, repeated parts, I'm going to call it. It's where the second integral here... When you get this integral, you have to use parts again just to integrate this this bit. Um,
but yeah that's that's the first that's kind of the first introduction i suggest you try a few of these different types you can also using this kind of same method is how you integrate um, inverse trig functions like arc sine x and arc cos x okay i'll see you in the next video